discuss a couple little tidbits of tips and tricks that I just wanted to throw out there. So I'm just going to navigate over to my PowerPoint here. Hopefully Holly's been able to help answer questions along the way. So I talked about the rules file a little bit. Okay, so uh, some super elevation tips and tricks just want to talk about real quick before we go today. Um, so a lot of times you get asked, you know, how do you format that spreadsheet or how do you format the CSV file to import the super elevation from the spreadsheet? I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the presentation, but I just wanted to show it again because I think a lot of people tend to miss this. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is you create, you know, you can create your rule-based sections and your lanes and your calcs, just let the software do what it needs to do. And then, you know, just do, um, come in here and use this style sheet to export it to Excel and it'll format it, it'll format it in the proper format, and then you just make your adjustments in Excel, and then you would go back into the software, remove the transitions, don't remove the lanes um, and the sections, just remove the transitions, and then just import the CSV back into OpenRES Designer. Okay, that's how you can easily get it in there. You don't have to worry about the formatting or everything because the style sheet will, will format it for you. So just wanted to point that out. And here's here's another one too that 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 would, comes up. I've heard people ask about is like, how do I remove all the, the super elevation calculations or the transitions, but still keep the sections and the lanes? If you try to remove the calculations utilizing the super elevation diagram, what ends up happening is you end up deleting all the lanes. So you know, if I'm over here in my super elevation diagram, for instance. You got to be careful with this if you're using the super elevation diagram. You know, this is going to define all your transitions and everything. If you delete all these control lines, the lanes delete as well. So you don't typically want to do that. Um, you want to keep your lanes if you're going to redefine some things in this manner. So where I'm going with this is that, you know, if you just want to remove the calculated super elevation transitions, basically any transitions from the lanes, just open up the table editor and press delete. Select all the, the rows and select delete. It'll it'll keep the section and it'll keep the lanes. And then at that point, you can just do some manual creation of the cross slopes if you need to using the the import super elevation from the spreadsheet option. So just wanted to show that quickly here. And then this one comes up quite a bit too. How do I keep super elevation transitions from updating if I make a change to the horizontal geometry? So say someone comes in and changes a, a radius of a curve or something like that. A um, couple ways to, to handle that is you could either, you know, use the non-rules-based approach, which is importing from a spreadsheet, or just deactivate the rules on the super elevation section. Um, you know, all the all the super elevation stuff has a rule on it. So has a rule lock. So if you right click on the section, you can see here, you can activate or deactivate the rule. So if you don't want it to uh, update for whatever reason, then just deactivate the rule so that it doesn't update as you change horizontal geometry. So you know, most of the people that I've worked with over the years, and even myself when I've worked on projects, generally calculated my super elevation in a spreadsheet. Um, I don't think I've ever used the software to calculate my final super elevation. I always had some trusty spreadsheet that I've used. Um, so that's my personal uh, way that I like to do it. And I know others like to do it that way as well. But if you're comfortable with using the software and it's giving you the correct results, then you know feel free to use the super elevation rules file approach as well to do in this stuff. Um, let's see, I got another, let's see if I got another tip on here. Oh, here's another one. So it's kind of a hidden one. Uh, did you know that you can apply shoulder rollover locks as super elevation lanes? Okay, now some people will typically, you know, use the shoulder rollover lock toggle that's built into the template. Um, but maybe there's some times where you just want to create some type of 2D, you know, super elevation lane out there, and you want to control the shoulder rollover locks that way. Uh, instead, we do have the ability to do that. Uh, the tool is a little bit hidden. Um, this is the icon for it. 
here. It's got the little lock on it. It's called apply shoulder rollover lock, and it gives you the ability to create a, a lane. So you can set the shoulder, for instance. You would create the uh, shoulder lane. You'd give it a width, and you'd give it a cross slope. Then over here, you could define the high side and low side, similar to how you would do it in, in the template. And this is similar to how the uh, there was a tool like this that existed back in Inroads and Roadway Designer, uh, actually inside the Roadway Designer application window um, that, that gave you this ability as well. So if you're looking for that type of functionality, it does kind of still exist here. You just have to know where to find it. And I'll show you real quick where you can get to this. So if you're on the super section, you select a section. It's actually, I think you have to select a lane. Let me see here. And you select the lane. Yeah, there it is. So if you select a lane and you want to create a shoulder lane next to it, then you would just say, select this tool there and enter in your parameters for that shoulder. Put in your, your, cross, your uh, shoulder rollover values there. And uh, it will create a lane there with the appropriate shoulder rollovers and do what it needs to do. Um, just keep in mind that you do have to, uh, in your template, make sure you have the super elevation flag set up in there on all your uh, template points for all your lanes and whatnot. So um, this one's maybe not as robust, not as many options as the one that we have in the template tool. But if you just need to do some basic shoulder rollovers as it relates to um, super elevation, for, for this, then, you know, this tool is certainly available to you there. Um, so just wanted to show that real quick before we end today. So um, that's about all I have for today. So it looks like we're like a couple minutes over here. Um, just make sure we have addressed all your questions. Holly, did you get a lot, most of the questions or do I have to go through the list here and see if I can answer some of these? Yeah, there's still some that I wasn't able to answer. Yeah, there's probably some I can't I answered them. Yeah. Okay, so we answered this one. Someone was asking about exporting super design data spreadsheet, and we talked about that. We can do that. We were on super elevation. Do we have enough room between full curve to apply? We mainly edit between curves. How would you perform manual edits? Can you add edits only by Excel poor? And we've talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, you really have to pick and choose how you're going to do this. You're either going to do this using the rules file or you're going to do it from the spreadsheet. You're not going to mix and match both methods. You know, so if there's some things that aren't working out right using the rules file, I would probably abandon that approach and just go straight with the spreadsheet approach. Um, it's going to be much easier to make changes in that case if you're doing something crazy complicated. Um, because the uh, super elevation rules file, that whole thing can get pretty complicated. So it's, you, know, you have to spend a lot of time getting it to do some pretty complex things. Um, sometimes you're better off just going straight to the spreadsheet and importing the information from there, if that makes sense. So it says, once edited, does the super elevation need to be locked and passed? If I made an update, profile after running super, I got recalculated. Yeah, I mean, you have to be aware of that. I mean, you know, if you think you're going to be making changes to the horizontal, then yeah, you don't want those transitions to move around, then you definitely want it to, you know, activate or deactivate the uh, the rule on the on the section. So that's why it's important to understand the difference between the super elevation rules based approach to super elevation and just doing it without the rules. You know, if you change the alignment when you're using the rules based approach, it's going to recalculate unless you have the lock deactivated, okay? Lock's deactivated, it's not gonna change it, but at some point you're probably gonna wanna turn the activation lock back on. If you use the non-rules based approach with importing it, it's not going to change the cross slopes. Cross slopes are still gonna stay whatever they were when you imported them, okay? So just, just be aware of that. Now, if you change the curves drastically, you know, the the distances might change a little bit just because of the geometry, the nature of the geometry, but the actual cross slopes themselves are not going to recalculate and reprocess using the, the import super method. So just have to experiment and see which method is going to work best for your particular project. Can you still add transitions to the automated method? Yeah, absolutely. It's still all the same lanes. It's still all the same sections and everything. It's just all created in one file rather than separated files. 
And someone's asking about shoulder rollovers if they're defined in the templates. Yeah, they're, they're, they're still defined in the templates. So you can do it in the actual template itself. So I'll just open up the template library. The uh, shoulder rollover locks, they've been greatly expanded in Open Roads Designer. So if, you, if you're used to the rollover locks that we used to have in the older versions of like Open Roads and Inroads, this it's greatly different now. If we take a look at the dialog, there's tons of different options in here now for handling all these different rollovers. So if you do need to do some sophisticated and complica complicated type of shoulder rollovers, this is probably the, the, the one you want to use is inside the template. But like I said, if you're more comfortable with using the plan view super elevation lane approach and you don't really need to do anything too crazy as far too complicated, as far as the super elevation goes, then you can also use that other tool that I showed. So you can see here, um, this is a dialogue for it now with the new settings. So yeah, we can still do all that. So it looks like we're all out, out of time here. So sorry, that was a lot of information that I covered. Hopefully uh, didn't confuse anybody too much. Hopefully I didn't go too quick. Um, again, a lot of this information that, I, that I've showed you today, this is in, in our course called Using and Defining Super Elevation. Just go out to Learn Server, search for Open Roads Designer and look for that course. It has uh, on-demand videos that you can watch as well as a data set, the exact data set that I'm showing you today. Is, is that whole course. So um, if you guys want to go out and learn some more about this, a little bit more detail, and take some more time to dive in deep with it, just go take a look at that course. I think it's about 77 pages long of various different examples, many of which I showed today. Uh, let's see. So that's about all I have. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.